Hi, I'm Greg, uh, kernel maintainer, developer, one of many thousands of kernel people. I'm going to talk about Rust and Linux, but first, it's really going to be about C and Rust and Linux, because C is what runs the world, and C is still very important, but Rust is doing good things too. But I was told that many of you don't really know what Linux is. <laughs> this is a Linux Foundation conference. Um, Linux is that little thing at the bottom that hides the hardware from you. It's our job as a kernel, an operating system, to isolate different processes, to make it so that you have a fast, secure system, and to make the hardware look agnostic. You don't care what disk controller you're using. You don't care what network controller you're using. You don't care what processor you're using. It just works. That's Linux's job. We get out of the way, we let you go and do whatever you want to do. We're a tool to let you achieve your task. Um, our community is big. It's really, really big. Uh, almost double the size of Kubernetes. Sorry, you're number two. We're still number one. Um, this was just last year. At least five, 355 different companies. We don't really count them all. We kind of get close. Um, we also go fast, really, really fast. This is the number of changes accepted. It takes, on average, at least three tries to get a change accepted. So that change, that 76,000 changes, has been reviewed two other times before it got accepted. Our maintainers do a lot, a lot of work. We have about three, maybe 200 maintainers that do the majority of the work, 700 total. Um, so the ratio of developers to maintainers is still quite large. Um, we're going really, really fast. That's almost eight, nine changes an hour for the past decade, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A small percentage of those go into the stable trees and 13 CVEs a day. Sounds like a lot. We're actually about half the size of the number of CVEs per day than the other operating systems. So if you count CVEs as being security issues, as it matters, I don't. <laughs> um, we're still better than the other people. And number of releases, eight to nine weeks, like clockwork for the past 15 years. New release, like clockwork. You can just depend on us. I gave a longer talk about how all this works, you can just Google that and look at that if you're curious. Uh, turns out we run the world. Um, Android, four billion devices, everything else is a rounding error. <laughs> you guys and servers with maybe 200 million, again, rounding error. Chromebooks, 25, 30 million a year for the past decade, still a huge number, rounding error. Um, Wi-Fi, um, all the Apple Wi-Fi are Three 5G modems run Linux, so all the iPhones run Linux as well. Washing machine, all the TVs, air traffic control, finance, um, satellites, and my favorite, the cow, automatic cow milking machine runs on Linux. <laughs> so let's talk code. I mean, I'm gonna, it's a keynote, so we have to show code, right? Um, this is a real code in the kernel today, um, Bluetooth. This is an example of a security bug. We're gonna talk about security issues. The first line up there, we, uh, we asked for some Parameters back, we look at the result and do something with it. Looks fine, been there for a few years. Turns out that's wrong. At our level of the stack, if we get something wrong, that's a security bug. We forgot to check that it actually returned a proper value. Uh, my intern fixed this past, this past summer, got a CVE, wonderful. Um, and we use go-tos. C uses go-tos, fun but we go to the place we need to unlock from, because we need to remember to unlock from this. And the compiler can't really check for this. So when you're a reviewer or a maintainer, you get a patch sent to you, all we can see is, oh yes, they did look at the return value, but did we need to unlock, do we do, do this? We can't always remember that. And that's a common, common bug. Here's another CVE that happened. Normally we just return the error, they did check for it properly, but they forgot the fact we had to actually unlock some other stuff later. So. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do this automatically? C, a number of years ago, put in something called scoped references. So you can, when you leave the scope of a reference, it'll automatically clean up for you. Finally, if we look at the code in Rust, other compilers do this automatically. We're like, why can't we do this in a kernel? We finally incremented our version of C that we support so that we can finally do this. And now we have something called guards. So we can, here's the diff. We remove some lines of code, and we can say, here's a guard for this lock. Let's grab the lock, and then let's do something. When the lock goes out of scope, it'll be freed. Much cleaner, we can get around go-tos, we can do lots of stuff. This is good. So going forward, we're gonna start doing stuff like this. We don't wanna modify the existing code, just going forward is good. 
but we still have to manually remember to grab the lock. We'll come back to that in a minute. So not only grabbing locks, but allocating memory. We can do things like, oh, we want to grab some, allocate some memory at the top. When we return, normally we'd have to go and free it manually. Here, we lose the scope, and away it goes. The compiler just knows to free it up properly. But instead, we also have to say we want to save it, so we've got to manually save it at the end as well. So this is C scoped locks and allocations. This is good. It makes the code simpler. It makes the reviewing easier, which is very, very important. We write code for people first, compilers second, because we have to maintain this for long periods of time. People read this and have to understand it. Less bugs, which is very important, and most importantly, the maintainers can have more fun and go do other things instead of reviewing unlock bugs. Don't want to do this. So let's look back at the original code that we had up here. At the top, C. So that we were to write that code in Rust, the top line adds a a question mark at the end. And that tells the compiler, if there was an error here, we'll return the error. So Rust will enforce the fact not only do we catch the error, that we also looked at the return value. That makes code much simpler. The compiler catches the bug for you. And that's very, very important. We want the compiler to catch the bug even before a maintainer has to look at this stuff. Again, with locks, Rust does some cool stuff. Rust will force you to grab a lock before you can even access the member, the data. Remember, locks are always supposed to be for data, not for code. And here, Rust, an example, this is in the kernel today, of Rust grabbing a lock before we access the data. If we try and access the data ahead of time, you just can't do it. The compiler will not let you. So Rust can prevent a huge majority of security issues at build time, which is much, much more important than review time. Don't rely on humans. Rely on code or tools so we can automate this stuff. That's why some of us are pushing for Rust in the kernel. This is very important. So again, Rust can do all the same things as C can do here. Very good. Because we have more developers than we have reviewers. Again, we might have a handful of maintainers for the kernel that do that full time. The majority of the maintainers do this as a part-time thing, part of their paid job or part of their own time. We need our maintainers and reviewers to have as much time as possible, make their job as, much as, e as easy as possible. Rust can also do some cool things. We can force validation of untrusted data. Data comes into the kernel, we need to validate it before we can trust it. That's a huge common security issue. Rust can enforce this. Again, memory lifetime rules, locking rules, error handling, and type safety, all very good things. But Rust is not a silver bullet. Here's some example code that is not in the kernel. Thank you. Um, the last line there, very common off by one error. Boom, the kernel will crash. Rust, however, when we access memory that it didn't want to access, will just crash. The kernel will crash, I'll give you a CVE, you'll reboot the box and go on. But with C, you would have a memory exploit. You could probably take over the machine. Rust will fail safer. It still will fail, it's fine, but it will fail safer. So again, you'll still get the CVE, but you won't get the box taken over. So that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. That's one other reason why we should be using Rust. Not that it's gonna prevent us from crashing, It'll prevent us, it will crash safer. It's today, it's in the kernel today. We have 34 million lines of C code. You don't run all those millions of lines of code. You run about, on a server, two million lines of code, but 25,000 lines of Rust. One of the new GPU drivers is being written in Rust today. The developers there are pushing for a lot of this stuff, and it makes the code easier to understand, easier to review, and hopefully more stable over time. But you've heard a lot of people complaining about this, changing Kernel developers' minds is hard. <laughs> the main reason this is hard, and we are grumpy about this, is because it forces us to review our C code. <laughs> and our code has evolved over the past 30 years in ways that sometimes we don't understand it. Sometimes we need to go back and look at it and enforce the rules. Rust allows us to, force, to enforce rules on our C APIs in the kernel that we hadn't been able to do before. So it's making us re-review older code. And it's hard. Developers, maintainers, don't want, they want to do new things. They don't want to look at their old stuff at times. But the change can be good. I think it's important to do this because mostly, most important, it'll make us maintain the code easier. Again, we write code for people first, compiler second. This will make us last for the next 30 to 40 years. Make the compiler do the work for us. And this lets us, I think, 
have more fun for maintainers because, again, the compiler did the work ahead of time. We don't have to worry about us trying to remember all those intricate things. Did they grab the lock? Did they check the proper reference? All that stuff. It's just done for us. And that, as a benefit, makes Linux more secure for you. You can go solve your problems. You can do what you want to do with Linux better. And that's, I think, very, very important. And most importantly, it lets us do world domination. Thank you very much. Thank you, Greg.